Hey guys, how's it going? Whoa, what a weird way to start a video. We've got a tractor taking a nap. <laughs> this is my 1972 Home Light T12. This was actually the fifth one built in 1972. Previously on the channel, we started getting into the engine. We pulled the engine out of the tractor. We established how long it has been sitting and also did a montage of when I first saw it and did some other things. We got into the engine, we pulled the head off of it because it didn't have compression. We did a few other things to it. We cleaned up the points, found a mouse nest in it, got the mouse nest out. We pulled the engine out of the tractor and went over it, ended up finding out it had spark, had to get the front shroud off of it, tried to get the, coil, the uh, fly, flywheel off of it, but failed. Ended up getting the... Um, flywheel shroud off of it after having to cut the bolts. Once we cut the bolts, we were able to get in, hooked a uh, drill up to it with a socket and we rotated the engine and got the engine to have spark. So once we did that, we ended up getting another, or I talked about my 110 and how I have found a parts tractor for this. I do not have the parts tractor currently, however, I am still going to just go on ahead and continue on. So that is where we're at for now. Everything has been pretty much done with the engine. We also looked into the steering setup. The steering setup is currently sitting on the bench over here. We opened it up and took a look at it and I was showing it off how uh, the way it was and also the bearings being bad in it and having a crack. So that's currently where we're at right now. That is putting you guys in the loop. I wanna go on ahead today and I wanna dedicate this video to the transmission. I do not know how this transmission works. I have an idea. I'm guessing it's probably the exact same as a Sunstrand transmission like within the 140s and the 300 series. However, it probably might be a little bit different but it should be just about the same. I talked about in the last video that I uploaded how the uh, relief valve works. The disengage valve for the hydro seems to work. I also <clears throat> brought up how I was able to turn that wheel right there and have it pump out fluid through one of the lines down there that goes through a filter, which the filter is actually gone. I'm not sure if the oil cooler on here is good. I'm kind of wondering if it's uh, rusted out or bad anywhere, maybe corroded, got a hole in it. So currently that is where we're at right now. The pump, as far as I know, is frozen. However, the wheel turns. So that means that the bottom half of the pump, where it goes to the motor that spins the wheels might be fine. The pump is two separate sections. The top set, I think that's how this pump is. The top section of a hydrostatic pump usually is where the pump is. That is what does the fluid. There's a swash plate up there, and there's also a pump for running if you have hydraulic lift or um, power steering or anything else. There is a hydraulic pump up above that pumps fluid. That pump um, is the one that is constantly going. And then there's a section of the pump down below that drives the wheels, or you can have it drive, um, they even use them in skid steers and excavators. You could use even combines. Like I said, though, the top of it pumps fuel and then, or fluid, and then there's a swash plate that goes like that or like that, depending which ways it goes, depend is um, what makes it pump fluid down to the bottom section of the pump. And there's a set swash plate down there where the one up top moves. The set swash plate down there is how much the pistons go in and come out of their bores. And that is what moves the, that's what makes the tractor move. I know that that probably wasn't the best <laughs> description of it, but that's probably the best example or the best um, explanation I'm going to be able to give. I've taken one apart before on the channel. If you're curious how it works, I'll leave a link to it down in the description. All hydrostatic pumps should be just about the exact same. Maybe some are different than others. So there you go. That's currently where we're at on this home light. So let's go on ahead and let's take this wheel off so that way we can get to the hydrostatic pump, the motor. 
which is actually right there. And once we get this wheel off, we got to figure out how to get this guard off of here. Uh, blower, housing, guard, whatever. And after we get that off there, we can figure out what's going on with the pump and see if the pump needs to be freed up or if the pump spins, it's just weather seized or if it's got a mouse nest in it that's making it not turn or something like that. So here we go. So the phone ran out of memory on me while I was down here filming. I was looking at things. I figured out how the brake assembly goes. Oh, apparently it's not. That's better. So I was down here looking at this. I figured out how the brake assembly goes. The camera ran out of memory. I'm not sure if you guys saw it or not. I figured out right there that that hole on the brake assembly bolts in right there. There's also some brake shoe material left on the brake shoe how thing, which I thought was kind of funny. This goes right there. This also flips around as you can see. When we saw it before, it was like that. It's actually supposed to be like that. And it goes in right there. I am currently trying to figure out where this spring goes. As you guys can see, it almost looks like it goes behind this bar and hooks up right there. I don't think that bar, yeah, that bar does that. So I'm wondering if this, this is your swash plate, by the way. I'm wondering if this hooks up to this bar for some reason. And it is the... Uh, some kind of return is what I'm guessing it might be. I don't know if I can look it up anywhere or not, but I don't think it's supposed to be behind this bar. There we go. Now it's not. Yeah, see, now it's got no pressure on it. We might even be able to figure out where it goes. I don't know if it mounts somewhere down there. I can't really tell. But it definitely goes somewhere for sure. I don't know if it goes probably down here. Maybe there's a hole in the frame. Maybe if we go over here, we can find something. But you can see right there, there's a couple spots where the housing is busted. I wonder if it goes right there. Would this, what would the spring do exactly? I wonder if it would just pull it, keep it neutral. Yeah, there's nowhere I can see it going. I wonder why it's there. I doubt it would be up there somewhere. There's nowhere for it to hook. So it would have to be down here. But there's nowhere down here for it to hook neither. Unless there's a mount that I'm missing. Or maybe it goes in that hole or this hole or... Maybe... It wouldn't go right there, you think? No. That would be covered up by the... Whatever goes here. Man, I hope that's not a water jacket. Or some kind of jacket for cooling. It doesn't look like it is. There's inside. There's your bearing and there's the... A bolt. That's where the drive shaft comes through. I hope in there it doesn't have to be clean. If it does, I'm going to have to change that out. So, like I said, I'm wondering where that spring goes to. I can't find a hook anywhere for it to hook up to. Wait a second. What's this? Is that a hook right there? I go. I'm trying to use the phone as a light. No. And even if it was, it wouldn't work because it's way too close to the thing. So. Hmm. It's got a square end on it, I see. It would either have to go over here somewhere. Or, and again, I'm forgetting that I'm recording this. I'm trying to see, you know. I wonder if it comes down here somewhere. But again, it's hard to tell. Because that's it right there. And it would have to just about pull it straight up or straight down. 
Is there anything up here where it would hook up? If somebody out there knows where the spring would go, let me know. Because, yeah, I don't see anywhere it would hook up. Because here's a line, here's a line. I know for a fact it wouldn't hook up to either of them lines. This cooler actually looks fairly dry. There's a little bit of wetness right there. Oh, oh that must just be from this. Yeah, that's the line that's been leaking. So, there you go. And then here's the swash plate you can see. I notice it's hard to get to go that way. Do you think this, it would explain why it was on this side of this uh, bar right here, but I don't see anywhere for it to hook up. This would be up here. Well, now I don't even see that spring or that swash plate. And what's the thing right there? Watch there be a, <laughs> a thing inside of there that it hooks up to. I don't see nothing. I see that plug right there. I wonder if that's how you get to this. It must be. Can that belt be moved out of my way? This here. It would either have to go straight down, which I don't see anywhere for it to go inside of here, or it would have to come straight up and hook up to something to hold pressure on this. But what is that spring? I wonder... Leave me a comment down below and let me know what that spring is, because I'm not sure. And it's right there on the swash plate, you know, whatever it is. So I think what I want to do now is I want to get whatever fluid is inside of that hydro drain. That way we can get the water and stuff out of it. Because I really don't want to pump that through the transmission. I also want to look around and see if there's any grease fittings anywhere. I forgot I can just set you guys in the stand like that. Um. We gotta put the wheel back on. I'm probably going to go on ahead and hook this linkage up here also. I don't, my guess is these probably, that's your tension. I bet you that's what this is. This is your tension and it holds on that and makes it pull on the brakes tighter. And then this is your parking brake. Yeah, that's what that is. Okay. I still would like to know what that spring is that goes on the swash plate, though. And then this goes around your pulley, like that. And then right here's where the pulley goes for the gearbox. If we put this back on here, will that belt stay in place? And not make me have to take it back apart? go yeah. this probably goes over top of the there's your hole so that's lined up where it needs to be this is lined up where it needs to be no it's not assembly moves. Oh, okay, now it is. I see how that works. And then that goes right there. Okay, I see how it goes now. So there we go. We've got our 
we got everything figured out. Let's get this tightened down first. We'll get this one over here. Actually, on second thought, we should probably do, what's this? What's this to go to? This uh, tab, I don't even remember. It went right there and it went right here. I wonder, do you think it held this? Hmm, interesting. Where's the nut at? Where's the nut at that was on there? Where'd the wrench go even, actually? That's a good question. There it is. And there's the nut. That's stuck in here. I have to pull it out. We gotta take this uh, bolt back out of here so we can get this threaded in here and get it out. There we go. I wonder what this is. It doesn't, it doesn't have one on the other side. It doesn't really seem like it goes anywhere or does anything. Maybe it holds this. No, I doubt that. Could it? No, that's too low. I shouldn't do it, but I'm going to leave this off until I figure out what it is, and then maybe once I figure out what it is, I'll put it back on. But that's just the way I'm gonna do it for now. And there's no washer or anything for up here, is there? Here's one. I'm gonna grab a washer real quick. So let's come in here and let's put this down. Yeah, let me, if you guys have any information on this thing, let me know. I've already done three videos on it without uploading them. I should probably just go on ahead and upload what I have. <laughs> All of these have been done in the course of a, three days. Three or four days. So there you go. This guy over here, which we have to find a way to hold the pedal forward in order to get him started and threaded. And then we got to figure out what thread this is so we can run a thing through it. Actually, before this was not held by a spring, which now it is, so that makes it harder to harder to do. Gotta get that one lined up on bottom right here. If we can, we'll probably have to loosen. This one has a slider. We'll loosen that one and that one up, and then we'll get one put in here. That's what we should have done, honestly, from the beginning. But oh well. 
And then there we go, that hooks up, so. So yeah, let's get this. On second thought. Nah, let's just go loosen both of them up. That'll be the easiest way of getting in here. loosen that enough to get it out and then we'll come over here there we go so now this should be lined up hopefully it is not now it is. That'll be easy to line up. Let me grab a half inch bolt, since I'm guessing that's probably what we'll need. And we should be able to get it hooked up. So here is a bolt. We can run through. Hopefully this is the same thread as this. I'm having a hard time seeing. There we go. I know you guys are too. What the hell? Oh. Apparently the light on the camera shut off. I had it on so I could make sure the camera was still recording. There we go. And that should be all right. say why is this not going but then I forgot that bolt was down there there we go so hopefully now it should not be more than likely of course it is <laughs> seems like a great come on seems like a great spot for them to put that right So that's good. So then this goes right here. I want to make sure that pulls on it. It does. And it does wrap around it, which is good. I also want to tighten that down a little more just to make sure that it's tight. I don't want it too horribly tight. Oh, that's probably good enough. Actually, we'll see how that is. It appears he's still, well, it's gonna be a pain to move right now, especially since, you know, however, it should be okay. Yeah, and it does, it does let enough pressure on it, so that's good. That means that we should be, should be just fine. So let me go on ahead and tighten this bolt up right there. And then probably once I do that, we can put it on its wheels. And once we do that, <clears throat> now since we've got it on its or since we have that done, we can put the wheel back on, put it back on its wheels. On second thought, I'm going to grease that grease fitting because it's there and it exists. And it's never a bad idea to grease a grease fitting, at least. That's my opinion. <laughs> no matter what spot they're in, never a bad idea to grease a grease fitting. 
Let's see if it takes grease. And if it takes grease, what it is, I bet you grease will probably start coming out. It's taking grease. It'll probably start coming out around here, right? I hear it. There it goes. Yeah, it's coming out. I didn't even see it. <laughs> it's coming out exactly where I thought it would, right there. I didn't even see it start coming out until that. Because I was looking at it wondering, why is there no grease coming out of this? Because I was expecting it more or less to come out the top. And well, now I'm seeing it come out the side over here, so. Yay. So there we go. And also, I recently acquired, and I'm gonna leak this out there for everybody. That way, if you're looking for a good source of towels to use for cleaning up grease, I have a paper towel dispenser. One of them that you would find in a public restroom or a school with the uh, brown uh, greedy paper towels. Those actually seem to do pretty good at absorbing grease. I used to use regular household paper towels for cleaning grease, but they never exactly did the job all that great. I've been using these paper towels lately. They're the ones that, you know, you find them in the public restrooms and they're, they uh, have a little bit of abrasiveness to them. I have been using them out here in the shop for all sorts of different things, and they actually seem to do pretty good when it comes to cleaning up grease. The um, other ones, the absorbent paper towels, they don't seem to do exactly a good job at absorbing grease. It seems like you get more covered in grease using them than anything. So I like them brown towels. They seem to do pretty good. So if you ever come across one of them paper towel dispensers, I would advise getting it because you can put those paper towels in it or you got to find them first. And once you find them... Um, if they're not over, if they're not too badly priced, you know, you can use them out in your shop and they seem to do pretty good. So there you go. I got a whole box of them around back. I don't use, I used to use them for drying my hands, but I think for uh, drying hands, they're better off using the uh, absorbent ones. So there you go. So what we're going to do now is we're going to be putting this wheel back on. And once we get this wheel put back on, we're gonna put it back on its uh, wheels. I'm gonna open this pipe plug right here. Hopefully this is the drain. And once I do that, all the fluid inside of here should drain. And while I'm thinking about it, actually, we should go on ahead and throw a wrench on it now and make sure it'll turn. Because if that doesn't turn, when we get it on its wheels, then we could be in some serious trouble. Oh, it does. Awesome. There's also another one up here. I'm guessing that's for our fill. Um, it's right there. That's a pain in the get to. It does turn good. So both of them seem to turn. So let's go on ahead and put that wheel on. And after this wheel goes on, We can go on ahead and get this thing put back together. Put back together as in um, get the wheel back on. And also get the <laughs> fluid drained out. So that's kind of currently where we're at. Come on, thread. I'm going to have to run a tap through these threads. I actually should just go on ahead and do that. That's what I'm going to do since I'm thinking about it. I'm going to go on ahead and run a tap through these threads. That way they are easier to run the bolts through because the bolts don't really seem to like to thread through them. Let me find a tap for it. And once I find a tap, we can run through them. I found myself a tap. 
we can go through all of these and tap them. I'm probably going to do the ones in the...
put it back on there temporarily just to see how the tractor looks with the hood. And then more than likely, right after the, and also make sure the hood lines up good. it to be but it is a lot better looking now compared to how it was before because when you would look over here before the frame stuck out past the hood and it doesn't know more you know so that looks already looks a, a lot better and also not to mention you can see the hood mounts underneath now compared to before where that was sitting on the frame of the tractor and I noticed it when I went to shut the hood so there you go Here's how it's supposed to be. As you can see, it actually looks like this sits up quite a bit higher than it's sitting up right now on the T12. Although that hood's been bent and twisted around and all sorts of different things, you know, in the course of its lifetime. So we'll probably never get it to be exactly perfect. However, we can try. <laughs> So there we go. I would say that looks, actually it does look like it's sitting up about how it should be. Now that I'm taking a quick peek. So where, here it is. Let's see if we can get this bend up. If any at all. If we can, great. If we can't. Well, that looks better. Actually, I'm starting to think it's sitting lower right now because the bolts aren't tight. That's part of the exact reason. Yeah, that's probably why. Oh well. And we need to throw it over a little bit. Because it's hitting currently over here. There we go, that's perfect. I guess that's how we're gonna leave it because it closes and it looks, I guess it looks fine like that. So there we go. That is how we are going to leave the hood. So what we need to figure out now is how to get the box up here out that hooks up to the drive shaft and drives the rear end of the tractor. That's currently where we're at. I'm thinking we probably have to take this off in order to get to it. I would also like to figure out how the PTL on this thing works because I'm kind of curious about that. We probably need to remove this. There's a bolt on the 
that had to turn on right now. Um, there's a bolt here. There's probably a bolt on the other side too. I don't know exactly how this box goes together. Judging by that, it's a gear and it probably spins to probably like a differential. So that's probably the way it works. So I'm not sure how far into this we have to go in order to get to that. It's pretty packed up against it. I also have a suspicion there's fluid inside of it and we never drained that out. So we might want to go on ahead and drain that fluid out of it instead of letting it flow all over the, all over the floor. So I wonder if we could actually, on second thought, oh no, it almost, ah, it bolts into the frame. You know, it would be nice if we could actually just take this out, this entire assembly without having to do anything. This comes off here. Yes. This whole side comes off the tractor by the looks of things. With that being said, we could just pull this entire side frame off and probably pull that box out. We'd have to do the same thing on that though. Yeah, we probably would. Unless... I wonder how they got it out on that one. Well, on that one, they didn't take the entire box out. They just took the one bit of it out. So, it a bolt, it a bolt, it a bolt, it a bolt. They look like 7 sixteenths. Let's just go on ahead and let's get that plug out of there and then probably want to find a way to drink it in. I was afraid that would be that. We'll have to set some stuff under it, I guess. Let's get all this shit out of the way. As I say, the front end of it is not too heavy. So we could just pick it up. Cool. And nothing leaked out of the ass end of it, it looks like, so therefore we should be fine. Actually, we probably don't even need to take the... Where's the match? We probably don't even need to pull the... Or put something... No, we don't. We can get to it from right here. Cool. So let's bring this over here. So my hope is that it is a, just a pipe plug. It's probably just gear oil inside of there. I would imagine. It's probably just a half inch. Actually, I think it was a seven sixteenths, not a three eighths. Or a half inch. I thought it was half inch for whatever reason. Maybe it is a three-eighths. There's our three-eighths. <laughs> Maybe. Is it? That went on. So there you go. It is a three-eighths. I think I'm probably just going to put gear oil in this. I don't think it'll matter. I could probably even put engine oil in it if I wanted to. Honestly. in there. Yuck. However, it is draining. So, gross. <laughs> we'll let that drain out for a while. And after that drains, we can go on ahead and get into it. Actually, it's currently 10 o'clock for me, so I might even just continue on with this tomorrow. And um, I'll probably go in for the night. So, I'll probably continue this in the morning. So getting back into this simplicity, I let the fluid drain out overnight. There really wasn't as much in there as I thought there was. I am wondering right now if it would be easier just to take that box out and just split the, or well, 
just take that box out is kind of what I'm wondering. I'm looking at it trying to see if the tractor splits in half because it, to me, almost looks like if I was to take this bolt out right here, take this pulley off, take that bolt out, and um, a couple other things, it looks like this tractor just splits in half. So that's kind of what I'm wondering right now. I'm also wondering, keep in mind, I've never messed with one of these before, so this is new to me. I'm wondering how exactly to get into here. I see this right here, but I'm wondering if there's a gasket for it. I don't have a gasket, so if there's a gasket and I can't find one, then we're gonna be we're gonna be uh, having to figure something out quick. So probably gonna end up taking these bolts out of this cover right here and just looking inside and at least seeing what we have. There's no play, no noticeable play in that box, which is good. So that means that this should be fine. It also doesn't go side to side. So that means that that's good, according to the, everything I can find about it and what Curtis said. So there you go. So let's go on ahead and let's get this thing flipped over onto its side. And I'm just going to start, actually, on second thought, I could get to them right now. <clears throat> it would probably be a lot easier. So it's been a few days. I'm not 100% sure what all you guys have seen, what the last thing that you guys saw was. I think the last thing in the video was getting into the simplicity and working on getting that rear drive assembly out of it. I believe that's the last thing that we did. Um, it's been a couple days. Got back into the home light. I haven't done anything with it. I was doing some part searching and I ended up finding a part that we needed. I found the oil filter assembly for my hydro in here, as you can see. I found this on eBay. I was looking around on there to see if I could find it just in the off chance and I found it. So that's currently where we're at. I got the oil filter I needed for this engine, for this transmission. I'm not completely sure if that transmission's any good or not. I don't really have a good way of testing it. However, I would be pretty set on that it should be fine. Again, this tractor did sit in a parts yard for a number of years. I currently have no idea as to why it sat in that parts yard. I do have fluid. We can put some fluid in the hydro. I also can pump up that tire. I am not completely sure what engine I want to put in it. I'm thinking about that 13 horse. However, excuse me. However, I do also have that 12 horse that came out of this tractor, which is probably the one that we should try getting running. We also need to get the gear assembly out of this and put it into the home light. I have an idea for doing that. I'm just going to get that pulley off of it, split the frame. And I'm going to do the same thing on that tractor, take the box out and split the frame, take the drive shaft off. And after I get the frame split, we'll get the box put in and we'll go from there. Because it is a pain in the ass to get that assembly out of there, you got to take the gears off. And Well, actually, it's not too horribly hard, but it would make it so much easier if I just take the entire box out now it makes me sound stupid, <laughs> but I do think it would probably be easier just to take the whole box and swap it from here. The box I'm talking about is the box inside of here that the drive shaft hooks up to and the rear pulley hooks up to that drives the transmission. I think that would be easier. How I also did, well, actually that and the bearings in that one are still good where the bearings and seals in this one are questionable. 
especially the fact that it sat outside as long as it did. So there's another reason why I want to swap the gears or the box. So there you go. It is late. I need to head in for the night. And once we do that, we can come back out in the morning. Oh, another thing. I need to get a better impact driver because we were trying to get the bolt off that holds that pulley onto that um, onto that shaft and we could not get the pulley to come off because the bolt is on there tight. So that's the next thing that we got to do. So yeah, I'll bring you guys back soon. Okay, so here is an update as to what I am going to be doing engine-wise on this tractor and also some other important things that have happened with the tractor while you guys have been gone. This is the 12 horse that originally came out of the T12, as you guys can see. I have been trying for a while to get that flywheel nut off. It has not come off. I have tried different methods to try and get it off. However, it seems like everything I try to use ends up bending. Those wrenches right there bent while I was trying to get it off. I used that pipe wrench on the end of that wrench right there and it bent, that wrench bent. So I'm kind of up in the air right now deciding what I'm going to do. I got to get that flywheel off in order to change out that shroud and also I got to check a couple things behind the flywheel. I want to clean up the flywheel as well as the crankshaft. That way no rust pits it and it is in a little bit better shape, you know, when I get everything put back together. I also want to check the flywheel key. So I have decided since we are going through problems here until I can get that bolt or nut to come off that crankshaft, we are going to be using the 13 horse that came out of the Simplicity. I know it's not the original engine and I'm sure you guys probably aren't going to like me for that, you know, but that's the one that we're going to use because it runs and it seems to run pretty good. I can't get this one done. I need to get an impact driver probably. That's where my next step's gonna go. I need to get a big enough impact driver probably to knock that bolt, that nut off there because I'm bending wrenches at this point. And yeah, I really don't wanna destroy that nut and I really don't wanna break a wrench. So that's currently where I'm at right now. So what do you say? We take a peek into this little guy and we see what he has to tell me. One thing that I was told is somebody at some point converted this engine over to a uh, 12 volt ignition as opposed to the solid state condenser, which I am a fan of that. So that is good. That's one less thing that I have to do. I was debating on doing it anyway. So it makes me happy to know they did that. However, I'm not a huge fan of how they mounted the coil, you know? But, I guess it's okay. I would have mounted it somewhere on the tractor. Because right there where it is, it could easily get knocked off by something if you get real close to brush. But, I would say it's fine. And we're probably just going to end up leaving it alone. Engine has compression. I was told it did run. So, I do believe that. Probably going to end up taking, having to take it and clean up the terminal over here, or not terminal, the crankshaft so we can get the PTO mounted onto it from the, from the T12's engine. This isn't a restoration. If it was a restoration, I would take that engine and use it. However, this one is sitting right there so much easier and probably going to be a better option for us. I'm tempted to pull the head off, but I really don't want to get into that nightmare. So we're just going to leave the head alone for now. I don't know the condition of the engine. I don't even think I've taken the spark plug out of it yet. So that's probably what we should do next. Yeah, actually we should do that next. Uh, where is the oil? There's a dipstick. There's another thing I haven't done is check the oil on this thing yet. <laughs> How do you get to the oil dipstick? Whatever idiot put this right here. Must have never ever checked the oil. There it is. 
foil is full and it looks fairly good. Fairly good and fairly clean. It's got a little bit of use. I don't smell no gas and it don't feel watery. So that's good. I need a piece of scotch brake. Probably get this cleaned up once we get the engine running. The carb is currently off of it right now. I gotta clean it. We'll probably end up doing that on camera. I was told that it is probably fairly dirty, which I would expect it to be, so. Oh well, I'm just gonna go ahead and clean it. That looks good. The keyway looks fine. We gotta take this off, we gotta take that off, and we gotta take that out. We're gonna see. I know this won't come off as one assembly. You know, I wonder why. <laughs> So let's go ahead and get this carb took apart and let's see exactly how things look in here. Hopefully, it does not look too bad to the point where we're going to have to replace it. However, hopefully, yeah, hopefully it just doesn't look bad and I have to replace it. So that's currently where we're at. I don't know if I have any extra cameras. Definitely seen worse when it comes to foot holes. That looks okay. You probably want to see this jet. I don't know if I showed you guys that or not. That looks pretty bad. <laughs> so there we go. That's that's our carb. Uh, all those and then it plugs up your jets and I see that it 
doesn't appear it was getting gas. So. I did see, however, the tank did have gas in it, so I do know that he did put gas in it. So there we go. <laughs> I'm gonna have to send them some pictures. So there we go, now that we've got that cleaned up. Let's go on ahead and dive into you. Stuck. The gasket looks okay, however, it's probably not going to survive taking it apart. Maybe. Maybe it will. No. Okay, it will. Will this come out? I'm impressed. This came apart fairly easy. Wow. I wouldn't have expected that. Might even be able to save this. Hmm. Okay. I don't know about you, but I'm impressed. I can't believe that came apart as easy as it did. So now we gotta pull this jet. We haven't done that yet. I actually turn this. Yeah, that's corroded up too. So this definitely wouldn't have run. I'm gonna take a second and just start putting things in here. We're definitely taking this and running it through the ultrasonic cleaner. Which by the way it is working again for anybody wondering. I did get that going again. I ordered a new kill switch for it, a new on-off switch, and I got it fixed. So now, it works good. Here's what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this and I'm going to run it through the ultrasonic and once it comes out, I'll get it cleaned up because there's really not a whole lot to show putting it in and taking it out. I've shown that before on the channel, so if you want to see me putting it into the ultrasonic cleaner and taking it out, go watch one of my past videos. I actually need to bring that back out here now that I'm thinking about it, so I might do that today, probably after I'm done doing this. I was just looking at it. So that's what we're going to do, we're going to take this in, we're going to let it wash, and after it is done washing, we'll set the camera back up, and we can continue with the video. So here's an update, we can go on ahead and continue on with the simplicity. I took a crescent wrench and I was doing some looking at it and I thought, you know, on these simplicities, that right there is intended to run a tiller. So I took it and I stuck a crescent wrench on the drive shaft where it bolts up to the engine. And I got on this and I turned it and I got it turned so it came off. I got the PTO off of there and everything else. Not in the least. I got it off. It was pretty stuck to the shaft. So, once I got that off here, I was looking around under here and I looked around over there. We can go on ahead and continue on with 
getting this box out of here and getting this separated. So once we get that separated from this, we should be able to get that box out. We'll probably have to take the drive shaft off. And once we do that, we can get the home light split in half. And after we get the home light split in half, we can put that gearbox in it. So there we go. That's pretty much where we need to be. So yeah, I think these bolts here are quarter inch that hold this box to the frame. it with this one this one's got good bearings in it and everything so we're just gonna go on ahead and swap this plate in I think we're gonna have to replace that transmission because the mounting things on it that mount that frame to the transmission are broke so we're gonna have to figure something out there unless we can just get away with leaving it the way it is which I would be more than happy with doing so that's on. 
Let's grab our bolts. I'm gonna take, actually, I'm gonna take our bolts and clean them up real fast, and then I'll bring you back. Got them bolts cleaned up. Let's go on ahead and get them put into this gearbox. I think if I remember right, these shorter ones are the ones that go in here, and the longer ones are the ones that go in the side, correct? I might just want to go on ahead and find out.
crazy days I do remember We were running still Had the whole world at our feet Watching seasons change Our roads were lined with adventure Mountains in the way Couldn't keep us from the sea Well guys, I think this is gonna be it for the video. I wanna just kinda give a quick rundown on everything that has gone down. I am not completely sure if everything is on camera or not. I got the fuel line, or I got the oil put into the little box right there for the right angle that takes it back to the transmission or takes that pulley and then takes the stuff from the engine back to the transmission, the RPM. I got that put in there. I have not seen any leaks out of it yet. There is some fluid right there, but that I believe is from putting oil in there and hydraulic oil going into the rear end or coming out of the rear end and just other things. This tractor really hasn't moved all that much in the time it's been sitting right here. So. The current plan is, I do still have that simplicity sitting over there. I am actually probably going to be listing that for sale. If anybody out there has any interest in that, let me know and I'll make you a deal on it. I am debating on selling it. I'm more than likely going to sell it. And if I sell it, I'm probably going to be including that rear end with it. No problem with that rear end all except for I took a bolt out of it that exposed it inside and now it is leaking. So that's why you see fluid underneath of it. And I have all the stuff for it. I am probably going to be keeping the rear assembly as well as that plate right there. I am debating on repainting this machine. If I end up doing a repaint, I'm actually probably gonna be swapping some things still from that to here. So there's a few things I wanna swap around still. However, at the moment, that machine is probably going to be for sale and it is probably going to be leaving. So again, I'm not completely sure. There are some other things on there I would like to take off before I let go of it. Um, I'm trying to think of 
if there's anything else, probably the drive shaft will be sticking around and the, the, um, what other stuff was I thinking about keeping? Maybe all the linkages and some other small stuff. The drive shaft will be sticking around because I, I think that drive shaft is the same one that goes on the 300 series gears, but again, I'm not 100% sure. But probably mostly everything that I know that goes to that tractor will probably go with it. So there you go. Transmission will probably end up going away with it too, but I'm not completely sure. So guys, I think that's going to be it for the video. I want to thank all of you for watching. We got a lot done today. I will say that. We got quite a bit done today in this video. We got the rear end all took care of. The wheels are on it. The front axle, I think actually all that was done in the last video. We got the steering all took put back to... That was another video. <laughs> um, yeah, we got quite a bit done today. And we also split the tractor in half today. I got to get new lines for the rear end to run that to this. And that is actually all that we need to do before we can put fluid in that rear end. We got to get the engine mounted back into it. And once the engine's mounted back into it, we can get this thing running. I was going to make all of this one video. However, I am kind of short for time. I need to get this thing out of my way. I have other tractors I need to get in here and get going on. I have other projects I got to get done. I have other projects I need to start. And I have other things that need to be took care of that are starting to pop up. And I got another one in here that needs worked on. I got this one that needs to come in. I got some other ones that need to come in. So this is just kind of getting in my way. I'm getting kind of bored. Usually when I start getting bored of something, it sits around for a while. However, this one's probably not going to be sitting around for too long. It'll be back in here before you know it. And also cans I need to open back up and I want to get back into. So there you go. All right, guys. I want to thank all you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If this is your first time checking out my channel, please consider going down below and hitting that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you a thing. It tells YouTube that you guys like my videos as well as it tells me that you guys like my videos. Guys, I really enjoy making these videos. I really enjoy getting into this stuff and getting my hands dirty and getting going on these things and getting them going again. It just really gives you a good feeling, you know, when you can look at something and say, man, I put a lot of time into that. I put a lot of work into that. Or, you know, I got that tractor running after it sat in a parts yard. So, and or repainted that. We are going to be getting back into that patio here soon. I don't really think there's anything else to do on it. I just got to get a set of rear wheels for it. The blue patio is also going to be showing up again. It is going to get a little bit of work done. It still needs some things done to it, but, you know, not really a whole lot. There's some things that will be coming up on my 74112. The 68112, I can't think of anything. The uh, 71110 is going to be getting some work done too, but I have, I have had the major projects right now, such as the H1140 and the H37140, and the H37140 is going to be coming back, as well as the H1140. Um, they got some things that need to be done with them. The 214 is one that is needs to be on the channel here soon. I got to get some work done to it. The 317 is one that I'm going to have to figure out what's going on with it. I thought I had it fixed, but apparently it has started to piss somewhere else. And it is, I'm thinking I have figured out what the problem is and what we need to do. So there we go. And also nothing to report on the T10. And we got to get the cup done. So there's some other things I need to get back into. So this needs to move. <laughs> so there you go. I need a bigger, I need a bigger building. That's what I need. I need a bigger building. This building's too small <laughs> because this is in my way. So there you go. I want to thank all you for watching and I will catch all of you in the next video. Take care guys. Bye.